is entitled, It Seems the Tampax Contains Asbestos. If they ask me why I wear combat boots, carry a grenade and a can of mace contraband, and wear a Nike missile strapped to my back, when they say, do you hate all men? I say, no, but I have feared them and I am unwilling to die Cowering. Dawae. When I was a young man, we were not a nation of people that we became today. We are a nation of people. And when I was a young man, you didn't see things very often that gave you encouragement. But there was one lone troubadour who had a companion who everybody knew their names was traveling about the country making gay people feel good. I don't know how to do this with the kind of emotion that I have at the excitement of being able to give to you that which gave me so much courage. But it is the 25th anniversary of their relationship and I introduce Allen Ginsberg and Peter Orlovsky. The weight of the world is love. Under the burden of solitude, under the burden of dissatisfaction, the weight, the weight we carry is love. Who can deny in dreams it touches the body, in thought constructs a miracle, in imagination anguishes till born in human body, looks out of the heart burning with purity for the burden of life is love, but we carry the weight wearily, and so must rest in the arms of love at last, must rest in the arms of love. No rest without love, no sleep without dreams of love. If we're mad or chill, obsessed with angels or machines, the final wish is love. Cannot be bitter, cannot deny, cannot withhold if denied. The weight is too heavy, must give for no return as thought is given in solitude in all the excellence of its excess. The warm bodies shine together in the darkness. The hand moves to the center of the flesh. The skin trembles in happiness. The soul comes joyful to the eye. Yes, yes. That's what I wanted. I always wanted. I always wanted to return to the body where I was born. Congress and American people, how can you help yourself? We have come out here to help you to ease your grief-stricken hearts. Fear of gays is claustrophobia, closed mind, violence, accusation, hypocrisy, tough heart, hiding panic. This day's gay liberation can mean liberation of heterosexual dignity, social delight, city playfulness, country tolerance, national non-aggression, international charm and spiritedness, enlightened masculine gentleness, 
feminine mutual affection, granny wisdom's old-fashioned open-mindedness, diversity of the physical body politic, yay, self-acceptance of body, humor of speech, spaciousness, friendliness, sensitivity, the dignity and wisdom of the whole blue sky of the mind we stand under. Walt Whitman, 100 years ago, said, I say democracy infers loving comradeship, without which it will be incomplete, in vain, and incapable of perpetuating itself. Now, Peter Orlovsky will read poem. Someone liked me when I was 12, when I was a kid in summer camp, around 13, and one night I lay asleep in a bungalow bed with 13 other boys. When in comes one of the camp counselors, who is a nice fellow that likes you, coming to my bed, sits down and starts to say, now you'll be leaving soon and going back to flushing, and I may never see you again. But if there's ever anything I can do to help you, let me know. My father is a lawyer, and I live at such and such a place. And this is my address, and I like you very much. And if you're ever alone in the world, come to me. So I looked at him, getting sad and touched. And then years later, like now, 28, laying on bed, my honeydew melon, Alan, sleeping next to me, I realized he was queer and wanted my flesh meat and sweetness of that age that we just might have given each other. Now do you know when we failed so good so long ago? All right. Allen Ginsberg and Peter Orlovsky, 25 years together. These are folk I have worked with since we began the actual process of organizing the march and the rally way back at a Philadelphia conference in February. These are the people that have worked together to make it happen for third world lesbians and gay men. And it is my pleasure to introduce Juanita Ramos and Armando Gaetan. Greetings, you beautiful multicolored people. How are you doing out there? Greetings from this Chicano from Massachusetts. Greetings from El Comité de la Latino de Lesbianas y Homosexuales de Boston. Greetings from Cola from New York. Greetings from the national organizations of Latino lesbians and Latino gays. We love you. Our speech will be dedicated to Ramon Mooney from Florida and from Gaston Rodriguez. Because of time limitations, we will try and hurry as fast as possible. Juanita will do the English version and I will do a quick Spanish version, okay? We want to share our vision, our vision for tomorrow, our vision that goes beyond color, beyond, beyond language, beyond sex, beyond class. A future where we learn to respect each other's differences. Now we have to learn to love our difference. We have to learn to use them to unite us, not to divide us. Among the Latino and Latina communities of this country, and there are many, Puerto Ricanos, Cubanos, Dominicanos, Chicanos, Latinoamericanos, and Centroamericanos, we face many of the same problems you face. For example, 10 years ago, while the Stonewall Rebellion was taking place in New York City, the Chicano movement was being revitalized, seeking justice and dignity for themselves. Where is this dignity for lesbian and gay men? But the Latino and white communities will have to learn that we are indeed everywhere. 
during the first third world lesbian and gay conference in the history of this country, the Latino and Latina caucus resolved that men as well as women must deal with the sexism and racism within ourselves and in our Latino communities. We have also founded a national organization for Latino and Latina, lesbian and gay males for the purpose of uniting our resources. 500 beautiful Indian, Asian, Latin, black and white people met and celebrated ourselves. This is our vision. We want to tell all our Latin American brothers and sisters out there, don't internalize that anger that we feel every time we're discriminated against. Don't allow other oppressed lesbians or gay men oppress you because you happen to be from a different ethnic group. Take the anger that you feel and tell the white lesbian and gay movement that we're here to stay. That all of us as oppressed persons have to unite together instead of attacking one another. That racism and sexism in the lesbian and gay community only serves the interests of our enemies who wish to keep us divided. That we do not have to prove to the white lesbian and gay community that we are as good as they are just so that we can form part of a movement that by its very nature belongs to every single lesbian and gay male in this world. If there is one aspect in which our oppressors are strong, it is in their unity, in their ability to pull all their resources together in a short period of time to counter any attempts we ourselves make to unite and work together. Just as our oppressors ally themselves independently of their differences to humiliate and harass us mentally and emotionally every day of our lives, so too we must realize that the lesbian and gay rights movement cannot operate in a vacuum, totally alienated from other oppressed segments in this country and around the world. We must look for allies in the women's movement, in the anti-nuclear movement, in the various struggles for liberation of the American Indian, Asian, black, and white working class. Remember, strength lies in unity. Thank you very much. Que viva Puerto Rico libre! Que viva Aztlán! Queremos compartir nuestra visión, nuestra visión para el futuro, una visión que más allá de color, de lenguaje, de sexo, de clase, un futuro donde podemos aprender a despertar las diferencias de todos. Diferencias, todos hemos sufrido por ser diferente y para la mayoría de nosotros salir del armario ha sido muy duro. Ahora hemos aprendido que nuestras, amar nuestras diferencias, Tenemos que enseñarnos a amar estas diferencias y usarlas para unirnos entre las comunidades latinas de este país y son muchas, puertorriqueños, cubanos, chicanos, dominicanos. Tenemos los mismos problemas que ustedes tienen. Por ejemplo, los chicanos también que tuvo una, el, el nacimiento hace 10 años de, en busca de justicia y dignidad para todos nosotros. Pero ¿dónde está esa justicia? ¿Dónde está ese, esa dignidad para las lesbianas y los gays? Pero las comunidades latinas van a tener que saber que estamos donde quiera. El latino y la latina está donde quiera. Durante la primera conferencia tercermundista de lesbianas y homosexuales en la historia de este país, el caucus latino resolvió que los hombres y las mujeres tienen que tratar con el sexismo, con el racismo entre sí mismas y entre las comunidades. También hemos fundado grupos nacionales e internacionales para desarrollar un entrecambio entre nosotros. 500 bellos indios, asiáticos, latinos, negros y blancos se reunieron y se, y se celebraron. Esta es nuestra visión. Gracias y con amor. One of the more courageous battles that are going on are being led by the, one of these gentlemen here with me. This member of Congress, Representative Ted Weiss from New York. Thank you very much. You've made a tremendous political statement today. 
More importantly, you've made a tremendous statement for human rights. After today, nobody can say that the American people do not support basic human rights for the gay community. That's what you've achieved today. What you have to do now, I think, is to go back tomorrow, starting with the representatives that you'll be seeing here in Washington, and then back home, working with the gay community and with the non-gay community, reaching out to every single member of Congress back home and every single United States Senator you can reach. Equal justice will come to the gay community a lot sooner after today. Thank you very, very much. Member of Congress, Representative Phil Burton from San Francisco. It was some 16 years ago, on this very mall, the American people in the nation's capital witnessed that beautiful Freedom March. And it was not all that long thereafter that in fact the Congress of the United States, acting pursuant to the conscience of the American people, enacted the Civil Rights Act, and in that legislative sense, we then did overcome. It was a little more than a decade ago at this very spot. There were a great number of people in the audience, some of us this side of the platform, and we protested then against that immoral war in Vietnam. That, that rally pricked the conscience of the American people, and shortly thereafter we removed our uh, troops from Vietnam, and in that particular we did overcome. So we come here today by the tens and tens of thousands of our fellow citizens throughout the entire country. This is a watershed event in terms of bringing to the gays and lesbian women freedom and the elimination of oppression as a matter of instrument of governmental policy. Just as 16 years ago in the Civil Rights Act, just in about 12 years ago in terms of the anti-war movement, I predict today that we are going to win this battle to bring long overdue justice to the oppressed in the gay and lesbian communities. Thank you very much. Let that underscore the need for you personally go to the office of your representative or your senator tomorrow in the houses and the offices of Congress. Robin Holmes, go to your car, there's an emergency. Robin Holmes, go to your car, there is an emergency. TRB is coming for sure, all right? All you folks with your back to this place, look around. TRB is on the way with other male entertainment, all right? There's been a lost child, a three-year-old child who enters to the name of Margot. Margot, she is wearing a green parka and blue corduroy pants. She has light brown hair. If you know where Margot is, if Margot is about your feet, Take her to the Lutherans Concerned Blue Banner over in this area over here. Lutherans Concerned Fra San Francisco Blue Banner. They're looking for Margot. All right? We need people who have vehicles who can transport the handicap from this area. The people that are physically challenged here below need some help in getting transported back to the bus area. If you have a vehicle that can assist in that effort, please come forward and uh, at this time report to the area immediately behind the stage and offer your vehicle. We need some help to get those folks back to their bus. Uh, they're screaming money at me a lot and I'll tell you why they're screaming money at me a lot for I and several other people who are march organizers are going to have to go into personal bankruptcy if you don't fork over. It's just that simple. This business of national marches on Washington is not cheap. This business of National March on Washington is very successful, and let's keep the elements of the money as successful as anything. Get in your pocket and give. Hello, well I got a chance to rest for a couple of seconds, and I am very proud to introduce Gotham, three openly gay men who have been working together for seven years. They are certainly not strangers to most of the cities in this country or to the active gay movement, but they are performers. As a matter of fact, you guys are fantastic performers first. 
They have just completed their first disco record for Orem Records to release October 25th. Without further ado, please welcome the fantastic, the fabulous Gotham! Thank you. Hello. Come on, everybody. Let's dance. Let's move it around. Let's Here we go. Move it around. Let's warm up our blood. Come on, we can't hear you. Hey! DC! Can you all jump up and down? That's it. A, C, D, C, A, C, D, C, O. Just one flow, call on me, then I will come in rain or snow. I'll climb your pole and turn your lights on. It's my job, man. I work from midnight until dawn.
cheering you on any way I can. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, you're beautiful. Bye -bye. Be we'll see you again. Gotham! Let's hear it for Gotham and the new album, Gotham! Gotham! Yeah, well, you can hear more because they're going to be performing all over the United States and let's all buy their albums and let gay people support gay artists. And now it gives me great privilege to present from one of the most important organizations and the largest in the country, from the National Gay Task Force, Lucia Velasco! Thank you. And they said famous people wouldn't be here today. It doesn't usually take... Can you hear me? All right. It doesn't usually take three minutes to say I love you. I love you for marching for me. But it's harder for some than for others. A star is a star is a star. Star is a star. But Gertrude, they said, the famous people won't come into Washington today. Then open the goddamn door, she said. Imagine, imagine a march on Washington without Jane and Tom. Imagine yourselves. Can it be we are too radical for the radicals? I love these late coming telegrams. Imagine yourselves, men loving men, loving women, loving women. Revolutionary is it to follow these people on this stage in 1979. Imagine my surprise and yours. But consider also my nervousness. We are not one in race, creed, religion, culture, sex. We are not one in political persuasion. No singular essence is gay. Harness this difference against the storm. The power in our diversity is that we cannot be contained. The danger is in diversity that divides us. To ignore the difference is to ignore reality. We can't ignore reality and win. Examine the anger that divides us. Examine it, learn from it, bury it. We are not the first to march for our human rights nor will we be the last. But movements, marches of people with far more developed common bond have succumbed to squabbling, factionalism, and despair. Gay has no singular essence, no national boundary. The danger is horizontal hysteria, hostility. Watch for it, learn from it, bury it! Though we want far more than our civil rights, we can live with no less. Coalition on the bottom line first. On this day, we march for our right to work gay, to have our children gay, to love gay. No singular essence this, woman loving woman, loving man loving man. No narrow interest can serve us in this particular battle. No dogma but power. And the power is love. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We have the largest, most sophisticated underground association in the, in the world. Use it. Don't cut yourself off from it. Build that network. The first closet to break down is the one in our own communities. We're here in Washington to show the world 
that we're here, we're everywhere. From this day forward, let no association of people, no gathering, no trade, no union, no profession, no city, no town, no family, presume ever again that it is straight. No straight political party, no straight school, no all straight anything anymore. 10 years ago, we shouted, gay is good. Now we're here to prove it. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you all waited because as usual, we saved some of the best for last. I could take no more great pleasure and privilege than in sharing a stage with the following person, the fantastic Audrey Lord. Oh my God. They're gonna print, she got a black eye and it was from me. <laughs> 30 years ago, the first time I came to Washington, my family and I couldn't eat ice cream in a drugstore here because we were black. Now, since then, I have come to Washington many times to demonstrate and to testify to different aspects of myself and my beliefs. And I see many familiar faces from those past marches here today. For lesbians and gay men have always been in the vanguard of struggles for liberation and justice in this country and within our communities. The first national conference of third world lesbians and gay men met in Washington over the past four days and it was an outstanding success. We had third world lesbians and gay men as delegates from over 40 states. Third world lesbians and gay men from Mexico, from Canada and from England. Now, we have all come together to demonstrate our power as lesbians and gay men in behalf of our own rights. And this is the beginning of a new front, for we are saying to the world that the struggle of lesbians and gay men is a real and particular and inseparable part of the struggle of all oppressed people within this country. I am proud to raise my voice here this day as a black, lesbian, feminist committed to struggle for a world where all our children can grow free from the diseases of racism, of sexism, of classism, and of homophobia. For those oppressions are inseparable. The question always is, what kind of a world do we want to be a part of? And affirmation and work does not stop with this march on Washington. Each of us has a responsibility to take this struggle back to her and his community, translated into daily action. The National Conference of Third World Lesbians and Gay Men and this march today were once only visions of what could be. Now all of us have made it our reality. Let us carry this solidarity that we are professing here today back with us into our everyday lives, tomorrow and the day after and next week and next year and let it be reflected in a renewed commitment to struggle for a future where we can all flourish, for not one of us will ever be free until we are all free. Yeah. Audrey Lord. <laughs> all right, we have an announcement. Can Mary <laughs> I'm sorry for hitting you, Audrey. Oh my goodness. Can Mary Beth Servley from Milwaukee bring Miriam's medicine to the back of the stage? It's very, very important. Well, as a performer, I've known what it's like to wake backstage a long time. And I want to tell you, this gentleman is so, he is not only so fantastically talented, but he has been so patient. Please, how about a great gay lesbian welcome for the great Gay Blackberry! Thank you. Well, we have a real time shortage, and I just have one thing to say, and then I'm going to get into my song. Uh, 
I would like for the media not to do a whiteout on all the black people that were here today because that or any of the third world people as far as that goes because that happens to us a lot I mean we put our energy into the, the gay community and a lot of the white people get the focus but we don't get nothing so I just like to say that thank you a message for you, everybody around the world <laughs> but especially the people here in the United States this is for you when your icebox is bare eat the rich Show your stomach you care, eat the rich. Oh, the rich have so much power, I think it's a shame. It's really not the problem, but we know who's to blame. I'm tired of being manipulated but their stupid game. Eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah. Eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah. Chemicals in your food. Well, eat the rich, yum, yum, yeah. Because the rich, they good, so go on. Eat the rich, yum, yum, yeah. Oh, the rich have so much power. I think it's a shame. This way well ain't not the problem, but we know who's to blame. And I'm tired of being manipulated with their stupid games. Eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah. Eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah. Okay, I like to take the time here to look at the menu. We gotta have a menu if we're gonna eat. It says here that melons are always in season. And I don't mean cantaloupes. I don't mean watermelons either. They got Gettys and meatballs. I said the Gettys and meatballs. And some folks, they like a oysters Rockefeller. But not me, I like to watch TV and eat Hearst patties, uh huh. So yeah, my Hearst patties. Well, we even got something for all of you, you organic freaks. We got a rose hip tea, and the tip you see, cause the rose is the hip of a Kennedy. Eat the rich, yum, 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 yeah, eat the rich, yum, 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 yeah, eat the rich, yum, 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 yeah, eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah, oh, the rich have so much power. I think it's a shame, they swear they're not the problem, but we know who's to blame. I'm tired of being manipulated with their stupid game. Eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah, eat the rich, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yeah. Okay, I'd like to take the time here to eat me a little bit. Excuse me, oh, brother, can you spare a rib? I know you can, I'm gonna take it anyway. So watch out. I'm not now, I'm in the middle of a Rothschild. Oh, the rich have so much power. Y'all, let's go grub out. <clears throat>
And while we just make the amplifiers work, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for coming on the march. And thank you to everybody for staying on for this, the whole evening, for the whole afternoon's entertainment. It's really great to see so many people here. A message from England. The British police are the best in the world. I don't believe one of these stories I've heard About them raiding gay bars for no reason at all Lighting the customers up by the wall Picking out people, knocking them down Resisting arrest as they're kicked on the ground Searching their houses and calling them queer I don't believe that sort of thing happens here Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey Sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Being a lesbian's wonderful fun you ain't fit to mother, a daughter or son There's no news in gay news, our last magazine But they still found excuses to call it obscene Read how disgusting we are in the press The Telegraph, People and Sunday Express Molesters of children, corrupters of youth It's there in the paper it so sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Hey, sing if you're glad to be gay Sing if you're happy that way Now don't try to kid us But if we're discreet We're perfectly safe as we want you don't have to mince or make bitchy remarks To get beaten unconscious and left in the dark I had a friend who was gentle and short Got lonely one evening or went for a walk Queer beaters caught him and kicked in his teeth Got only hospitalised for a week And he still bears the scars To be gay, sing if you're happy that way. Hey, sing if you're glad to be gay. Sing if you're happy that way. And sit back and watch as they close down our clubs, arrest us for meeting and smash up our pubs. Make sure your boyfriend's at least 21. Don't be a mum Lie to your workmates Lie to your folks Put down the queens and tell anti-queer jokes Gay lips ridiculous Join their laughter The buggers are legal now What more are they after?
I know that's your number, but it's one that I'd like you to sing because we're still being broadcast live over the radio. And I'd like the people out on the radio to hear everybody gathered here today sing this song, not to the straight people of America. We aren't concerned with them. We're talking about our sisters and our brothers who are out there too frightened to come out today. To all those people, there's a song written by Noel Gregg in England, which goes, All you gay women, all you gay men, come together, stand together, and each other's rights defend. All you gay women, all you gay men, come to us, stand together, and each other's rights defend. Why don't you come and join in? All you gay women, everybody, all you gay men, come together, stand together, Cities. Some are black and some are white. Some you see and some are hidden in the shadows of the night. To be gay is to be fighting all the prejudice and lies that condemn us to be running scared and lonely all our lives. the time to take a stand. Workers, women, gays and black and white now opening our eyes to the need to take control of both our bodies and our lives. Find a microphone, all right? The next speaker comes from the labor movement. He was an organizer of the Boycott on Coors, which I think is one of the finest things we've ever done and the most successful. It is my pleasure to introduce from San Francisco, Howard Wallace. In California last year, when Senator John Briggs first placed his witch hunting measure on the ballot, the polls showed us losing two to one. Barely halfway through the campaign, the entire labor movement throughout the state 
had unanimously voiced its opposition to the Briggs Initiative. In stark contrast, the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce refused to take a position. Now, the labor movement was not only our only ally in defeating Briggs, but it was certainly the largest and most powerful one. Its support came early and solidly, making it easier for others to follow. So not only are we everywhere in this land, but our presence is starting to be felt everywhere, including in the unions and at the workplace. Allow me please to greet you on behalf of our working class sisters and brothers from California who cannot be with us here today. Because there are vast numbers of telephone workers, truck drivers, office workers, retail clerks, machinists, aerospace workers, public employees, hotel and restaurant workers, all kinds of workers who are here in spirit today. It is they who one day will have not only the will but the power, real power to bring the whole system of humiliation, oppression and exploitation to a grinding halt. It is they who will win their non-gay sisters and brothers to the justice of our cause and together begin the reshaping of the society from its foundations. They will bring to the world of the working place our message we are family. They will give that word family a new meaning, one that brings us together instead of pitting us against each other. Of course, the present reality is not so promising. Our struggle is not the only struggle. The most devastating inequalities of our time are economic. All of the festering problems of modern capitalist society are now bearing down on us all at once. We are sliding into a deepening recession that some leading economists predict will become a major depression. In such times, every kind of social inequality always becomes magnified. Crude and primitive scapegoating of minorities who are weak, isolated, vulnerable, or simply different is becoming commonplace. We are presently sitting ducks for these misdirected pent-up hatreds. Powerful people are setting us up, portraying us as alien to other progressive movements. In spite of these ominous times, we have reason for optimism. We build a strong mass movement in the face of huge jobs as it goes, we can choose the direction we'll take. How will we use that new one power? In coalition with other, other liberation movements? Or will we allow it to be immobilized in exchange for government patronage positions? Stronger movements have fallen victim to that trap. Will we continue to tolerate extreme economic, racial, and sexual privilege in our own communities or the abuse of workers in gay-owned establishments? Will we allow ourselves to be bought off by vicious corporations like Adolf Coors Company? We can't take our rightful place in the revolutionary process of our times unless third world gay people, lesbian and gay workers can move to the forefront of our movement. A new day is coming. It will come so much sooner if we cast out the great authoritarian father figures housed in our minds. If we shed our self-hatred and shame, if we stop assuming that the president, governors, mayors, and officials know better than we, if we trust to our own strength instead of democratic and republican hierarchies, if we remember the battle cry that inspired the early labor movement, an injury to one is an injury to all. Thank you. Howard Wallace. I have introduced the next woman so many times that I feel like we're a comedy team right here. Of course, she is the author of Sexual Politics, Cena Flying, Kate Phillips! Thank you. <laughs> Can I talk to you about love? Uh, that's why we're here, isn't it? May I remind you that love is against the law. That love as we know it is a criminal activity. That lovemaking involves illegal acts. We are here because we have committed them. And we enjoyed them enormously.
We are an army of lovers. That is a fearful thing in an establishment such as we have come against today that gives you pornography, child abuse, and warfare. We really threaten uptight America because one of the most effective ways to control people is through sex, through shame, through guilt. Remember it. We are, we are the agents of one of the most important social transformations that has ever taken place since the beginning of patriarchy. The size of our march in 10 years, we have gone from not even being a word you said in public to a great national force. We have been marching a long time though. We came through history. We came through the persecution of the Middle Ages. We came through the fires. The first movement in Germany in the 19th century, the first movement for sexual freedom was exterminated in the camps. That will not be our fate. We are now too big but we are dangerous. In a fascist society, in a growing authoritarianism like you get in America, which is getting to be more and more a country run by guards, we are a terrible, seditious force. We have come through the persecution of love to its restoration. But don't forget, we're outlaws. It's our great advantage, that's why I recommend it to you. We are all that is feared. We are the unknown, the undiscovered, the never dared. We are the only minority group also that you can join overnight. In the twinkling of an eye, in fact. We who have committed the crime of loving, we are freedom with more risks than servitude ever offered. We dared to know pleasure. May I say pleasure again? I don't think it's been mentioned much today. We had guts enough to love. They tried to cover this with guilt, shame, dishonor. They made it as awful for us as they could, but it was wonderful. It is getting more wonderful. This is the experience that we share. This is why we are here together today, because of a shared experience. Fellow criminals, <laughs> never forget your nights in the days of your fighting for their freedom. Remember this experience. It is the tenderest, finest moment of our lives. And in the clamor for our civil rights, always remember that they never granted them nor withdrew them. They only stole them. And remember most of all that we have so much more to give them than they have ever taken from us. We have been places we have known things, seen, suffered, feared, felt, experienced, ecstasy, hell, wonder, our, all through our illegal acts. They have brought us 
the full richness of the human experience. Our freedom, finally, when they understand it at last, is theirs. So keep loving, keep making love, and soon there will be enough. Thank you. Kate Millett, brilliant, genius, dedicated, loving, radical feminist. My sister, my love, we would like to give you more, but they're going to... <laughs> Came about. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> these writers certainly have a way with words, don't they? We have an emergency announcement. It's absolutely essential that Kim from Woodstock come to the stage immediately. Kim from Woodstock. And naturally, they get all these gorgeous speeches. Hey, I didn't do my speech and just get off, did I? I came out and emceed, and what do I have to do? I have to call for 20 volunteers to help strike the sound system. It's essential right now that we need 20 volunteers. So I'm going to ask for 20 people to put their hands up, and if 40 people put them up, then 40 volunteer for please in 20 minutes volunteer to spend an hour striking the sound system how many people will volunteer to strike this sound system hands up i don't see enough hands so we gotta wait i still don't see enough hands come on i only see eight hands and i need 20 hands let's go they've worked all afternoon they've been working 24 hours one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve come on 13, two hands don't count. They only count as one, honey. Put them down and quit waving. 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, we got 20 volunteers. Y'all get a kiss. I'll see you backstage. Now, calm, calm. I am about to introduce a woman who was a mentor to probably most of the major people in the women's liberation movement. Without Flo Kennedy, there would be no women's liberation movement. My friend, my friend, Florence Kennedy. Come on, stay here, stay here. Okay, everybody, while my chorus gets together, hurry up, chorus, get over here, y'all, hurry up. I just want to tell you, in solidarity, at sundown tonight, Lesbians and gay men from San Diego to San Francisco will be meeting at the ocean, shining their flashlights to give us in Washington their love and support. Okay, this, this song, hurry up, we've only got two minutes. This song is dedicated to Anita Bryant. And I've got Ollie Scott, and I've got Kate Millett, and I've got women from Texas, and I've got a woman from New Haven, and men from Canada, and everybody. Nothing could be sweeter than to find out that Anita is a lesbian. Nothing could be finer than her sharing her vagina with a For only one day, she'd find out what fun it is to be gay. But instead, she saw her civil rights and dated Broward. She's a lemon. Give him the fist. Yay. Thank you. It's Barry here. That was Blackberry. That was Mary. That was everybody. Maxine Feldman, a quality street chorus. Thank you all, thank you all. I've got two minutes, here goes. Remember tomorrow, you are not just gay, you are not just oppressed, you are taxpayers, you are voters, and you are consumers, and you've got power. You've got consumer power. 
You've got woman power. You've got lesbian power. You've got parent power. And you've got gay power. When you go to the members of Congress, don't just talk about civil rights for gay people. Talk about the abolition of the antitrust division for failure to enforce the laws against the oil companies. Talk about $98 billion for the MX missile and you don't have money to pay your tuition to law school. I want every student when you go back to campus to demand your money and if they don't give it to you, demand an investigation by health, education and welfare and if that doesn't work, demand the abolition of health, education and welfare. It's a crock of shit. If you can't get your rights through your government, demand the abolition of the agency that is supposed to be for the civil rights for the people. And if you can't get your tuition paid through law school, through medical school, and through engineering school, demand that no student vote for any member of Congress that voted for the $98 billion MX missile. And if you can't pay your fuel bills, demand to know why every year since 1950, the oil companies in the Arab area, oh, I'm out of time, okay. okay I'm out of time, but I just wanna tell you you tell Congress that we are voters, we are taxpayers, we've got powers, and we want the FCC to require that national advertisers give women, men, gay, and breeders an opportunity to do our programming. We want programs by Robin Tyler, we want programs by Rose Jordan. We want, we want our people to produce for primetime television. And if they say they're, that you're not ready, you tell them to kiss your ass. And I said so. Thank you. Thank you. Look, Kennedy.